This is Harry Jones for Boxing Social in partnership with Empire Fight Store in Liverpool. Today, I'd like to be joined by Derry Matthews. Thanks for letting me come down the gym to speak to you. Has it always been right of passage for you to open the club? Yeah, it's always been me. Well, when, I was, when I was still fighting, I always had, I always knew what, where I wanted to go in life, what I was going to do. Um, I'd become a qualified PT at the age of 17, 18. Um, so I always knew the fitness part of it was, mm. was always there for me. Um, and I'd be pro clear. I wouldn't say it was coming to an end, but about two years, two years before it did end, I should say, mm. um, I opened a gym, a little, a small gym. Um, I went affiliated to the amateur boxing club at the time, but I knew that's where I was going to go down. That was the route I was going. Mm. And then later on, it, it built and built. And then, what well, say, a year, year and a half before I retired, the mm. amateur club got going, and, mm. and we it's built from there. And, I've always, you know, had a passion for it. I love the sport, it's been good to me, so it was about putting something back into it. Mm. Um, and then I'm just building it, building a, an empire, I should say. We will go on to some of the charity work you're doing, some of the yeah. work you do in the community, but before we just spoke off camera there, you've got a few boxers, youth competitions, the new the national youth championships in the end of, well, the middle of February, the start of February, length of February, so yeah. A lot of amateurs that are boxing, similar as you did, for yeah, national titles. Yeah, I've, I've got about 50 kids carded for yeah. the club. Um, we run amateur boxing shows on a regular basis. And then I've got two, so I've got four lads going in the Utes. Mm -hmm. They're weighing on the 20th of May. Um, they've been doing double sessions, then of the morning, 6.30 with me. And they're back in the evening, 6.30. Um, and We've just got about getting them right, getting them prepped right, and doing being the best we can for them, and, and then being the best they can for us. But mm. myself and the other amateur coaches, who really, have, you know, we're happy with the progress we've made. I think we've been going out this our fourth or fifth season. Mm. Um, we've had a couple of national finalists. Yeah. We've had a kid who's boxed for England. We started with us from scratch. So we're doing something right. We've had loads of May side and Cheshire champions. So for me as a coach, I know we're doing something right. We're leading in the right path and. Once you, I've, I've got a feeling that once you get one national champion, this just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. I was, I was from the, I'd say the most successful amateur boxing club in Britain, the Solly. Mm. Um, I'm proud to be from there, to, to play the massive part of my life, and it still does. Yeah, it does. I'm calling yeah. on a regular basis to speak to the boss, Alan, Tony Chandler, my old coach, Paul Eddie, my old training partner, who's the head coach there now, and, and my other idol, David Burke, my idol growing up, he's a, the, the lead coach there as well, I should say. And, so that club plays a massive part to me and I just, you know, being on the success. Yeah, I mean, we'll go into the, some of the coaches that you've been with, some of the gyms that you've trained in, but yeah, going back at those amateur days, other than your pro career, which we will go on to a little bit, but how do you reflect on, on, on those days? Because they were massive days for you, obviously, yeah, in, in the, the Youth Olympics as well. Yeah. That's a massive, massive <coughs> step, step for you. Yeah, I had, a, listen, I had a great, successful amateur career. Um, I won a schoolboy title, an NABC title, a junior ABA title. Mm. I won the three titles in one season. If you were September born that year, um, you could go in, in all three championships. So I was lucky enough to win them. I got beat in the junior ABA final to Lee Askins, who went on to win a world title. I got beat one year to him. Uh, so I won them three national titles, and then won a senior ABA title, I won a junior Olympic mm. gold medal. So you know, I won every national title, box for England, went to the European Games yeah. for, for England, I captained my team at the European Games yeah. as well. So I've had a good career as an amateur, at ten, a 10 pro at the age of 18. Yeah. I remember winning the, I won the senior ABAs the year of the Commonwealth Games in Manchester, and I never got selected for the Games. Mm. Um, they selected Mark Moran, who was a year above me, but for some reason he didn't. Well, the odds are reason, but he didn't enter the. He didn't enter the senior ABAs the year I won them, due to the fact I was going in them. Um, he's already been selected, so he avoided going in them for, for that reason. I stopped. I think I stopped everyone in the ABAs mm. apart from the final. I beat Fred Holmes, who was who sort of passed away a couple of weeks after. Um, our bout, but he was my England, England mate, mm. my England roommate. We went Junior Olympics together, the Europeans together, and the, loads of box clubs together. Um, so I stopped everyone and beat him on points in the final um, to win the, to win the elites. Well, it's called the elites now, but yeah, back NA, in my, well, NAC is now called. Yeah, it yeah. changes every every year. Yeah, but so it's back the NAC in my days, you were just you were the ABA yeah, champion, yeah. and I was seventeen. I remember being 
the year I won them, Paul, the likes of Paul Smith won them. Um, but they were all, all always a year above me in school, mm. schoolboy championships, NABCs and whatever. Yeah. They were always a year above me because I was born in September. Yeah. Yeah, I'd always say, stay back to it, you, you were lucky. Um, <laughs> I was 17 when I went in them and I was 18 mm. the year I won them. Mm. So I was, I was, I think I'm still the youngest ABA champion. Yeah, I was, yeah. At 17, I was 18 the year that I, I won them. Um, and yeah, I've, I've, you know, I, was, I was lucky enough to win all them national titles. Never got selected for the Commonwealth Games. Mm. So then, Frank Warren, well, my manager Stephen Vaughan at the time and Gary Metcalf and them, they approached me to turn professional, to, to turn over with them, sign with them. And then Frank Warren come knocking on the door. So, you know, I always stayed back. I'm a kid from, from Liverpool, proud of where I'm from. Mm. Got a good family, good everything, but he always wanted to be a pro boxer. Um, and then they offered me a deal when I couldn't refuse, mm. and I went from there. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I spoke to Frankie Gavin as well uh, previously about the the ABAs, and he that is still one of his biggest highlights of his career. So it still obviously means that a huge, huge, um, you yeah, know, huge event in your life, mate. Yeah, it, it is, and I, I still think now if I wouldn't have went to. Uh, if I would have got picked for the Commonwealth Games, I must probably wouldn't have turned professional. Really? Um, yeah. Because, yeah. uh, you know, I was ABA champion. Every ABA champion that year went to Commonwealth Games, apart from me. Mm. So uh, they wanted to send me the World Championships. For me, the World Championships is five times harder mm. than, than the Commonwealth Games in Manchester, in the, in the North West. So I just said, well, I'm not going to get picked now. When will I get picked? And I feel that if I would have, if I would have went to Commonwealth Games, would have medalled, I'm sure I was on a programme for the next Olympic Games and I've still got all my paperwork what my, what my mum kept um, and my training programmes for, for the England and G, well, it's GB now yeah. the England set up what, what programmes we were on and I would have moved on I think I would have been on the, the next four year platform to all the um, Olympic Games Is that what you try to instil into your boxers that doing that traditional route fighting for a senior ABA you, know, you see a lot of boxers at the moment are turning pro I mean Enrico Moses Itama being one but yeah, Moses has boxed at youth world level and, and yeah, done all of it within like the youth European setup. But is that the way you try and instill to your boxers to wait and stay in the amateur game for a long time? Look, if you're the milkman in the streets or the postman, you can be a professional boxer. Okay. That, that's that's how that's the way it's gone now. And it's it's protect, I, me personally. I hate that. I think you should have to have won a senior ABA title or at least box for your country before you do it, get a pro contract. But to just like. To everywhere, every single street you go down in Liverpool is a professional boxer. <laughs> That's right, I'm right. Everywhere in Manchester, everywhere yeah. in Newcastle, wherever you are, there's a professional boxer. The social media's took over. They all social media. You, a lot of them become social media boxers and white collar boxers. Yeah. They all turn a professional. And you're thinking, oh, fucking hell, what's going on here? What is going on? Well, that's the way life's going. YouTube, yeah. YouTube boxes. Look, we'll go, we'll go on to that. But I was, I was waiting for those questions later on. But you know, let's. How would you have dealt with being in the professional game now? With the whole, I mean, you know, social media was a thing when yeah, you were boxing. Yeah. I mean, you had when you fought Crawler as well. I remember you getting some yeah. stick online from when you fought Crawler for the first time. Remember that? that yeah. you, there's a story in which you told about that, but now it's everywhere and, yeah. and you need a social media following arguably to get those big fights I mean, you, know, you look at you know, someone like Johnny Fisher for example yeah. has got a huge social media following which has helped let's say yeah. him to get in those big fights how do you think you'd have coped in, in boxing nowadays? I, I have a, I, I'll still say now I'm also one of the biggest followers in the city mm. um, without social media mm. early on in my career mm. I mean I was lucky enough to go on Ricky Atten's undercard, Joe Carl's yeah. Atten's undercard, so tickets sell themselves. <laughs> yeah. but, but I got a fan base, um, and no matter where I boxed, I, I took a couple of thousand with me. Mm. Um, without social media, I think MySpace was out at the time. When <laughs> I, when I, yeah. MSN, that sort yeah. of thing, yeah. And it was all a Blackberry with the pins, and that, <laughs> that's, when I, that's when I was first time pro, and there was no social media, it was just, you were a good fighter, and people respected you, you were a good mm. fighter, so they bought tickets to come and watch you, whether it was... One of the lads with the granddad, the dad, mm. the aunties, the mum. That's how, how it was. And when I when I, f I felt like I boxed, it was more like it wasn't just about the boxing show. It was like the evening. It was like the event. I'd always have yeah. a massive after. I mean, I never always ever went to them. 
whether cause I've been in the hospital getting stitches or getting <laughs> fixed up. But I'd always make sure I had an after party for everyone to go back to. Yes. Kept my people close who bought a ticket off me would be going somewhere to enjoy the night. And I think that's it was like a, a good night. And I've got a group chat still going on my phone mm. from I think it's 2013, 2014, <laughs> with everyone who bought a ticket to come and watch me still in that group chat now. Really? Yeah. Gosh, People yeah. have moved to Australia who are in the group chat and so it's just like we're still all we're all still all friends but it that's and I, that was too I think that was true to fighting when just about mm. social media. But now going forward, if you're good on social media you can become a boxer. That's how and it, it's it's horrible to say but it's taken over. Have you ever yeah you know, When's the last time you went to a, a, a fight night? Yeah, as as a spectator. When's the last time you went? Did you just mention there? Yeah, I, oh, to be honest, I'm I'm out nearly every night of the week at an amateur show. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. But as, as a professional, when I don't really, I don't really go. Do you, you still know? watch boxing? Still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still, I'm, I'm still. I'm, listen, I've got professionals to train. Yeah. yeah. Um, but amateur boxing is like sort of basically took over my life at the moment because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you're non-stop with, with it um, and preparing kids and worrying about out sparring doing this making sure you're looking after them the way I was looked after mm. I was looked after the best amateur and professional by the Solly and, and by Georgie Bourne um, so I've got to make sure I'm the same with my with my fighters and uh, I show my fighters the same respect I was I got given I suppose one of the things that has changed from when you were boxing to, to, to now I mean the amount of times that, that, that boxers fight a year, for example. I mean, you boxed six times in 2012. One of those was a British title against Collar. Yeah. Do you feel that, you know, you know back in the days, you know, Chris Eubank used to fight, you know, three or four world title fights. You know, it, it seems that those big names are only fighting two times yeah. a year. I, I think, as well, when I first turned professional, I think I was three years in, I had 21 fights as a pro. I got seven fights a year on a contract. I got eight, I think. Mm. Of Frank, but I ended up doing seven, which I couldn't know about. Mm. Um, two years as a pro, I had 21 fights. I was only 21. Mm. I, was yeah. 20. I was 20, I think. So I'm like, wow, that's a lot, a lot of fights. And yeah. I, I'd want to have six fights here. I don't see a point in having one fight, going missing, fighting again for five months later, getting your Christmas money in. If you're an athlete, you're in the gym. Mm. You stay in the gym. and. Georgie Vaughan installed that in me. Once you're, once you're a professional athlete, you've got to live the life of a professional athlete. And, you know, every training session doesn't have to be a gruelette. It doesn't have to be punished, sparring. So that's where the damage is done, sparring. Mm. George always stated to me that we didn't do a lot of sparring. We done smart sparring, clever sparring, mm. tech sparring. Um, and I think that's why I had a long career. And I think I've got George to thank for that, where, you know, it was about being smart, being clever. And the more clever you are, the more smart you are, the more fights you are. We'll have to mention his name. You put a tweet out the other day that read, um, a good coach can change your game, a great coach can change your life. Yeah. How much does that gentleman mean to you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's me, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, and look, what, look what he's done as a, as a coach, going back, back to the amateur days where, where he's had. He's had numerous champions, two Olympians in one games. Uh, I think he bought medals as well. So many senior ABA champions, British champion, Commonwealth champion, Jazza Dickens as well, yeah, he's had yeah. Kid Shamrock, JJ Metcalf, he's had him, um, Gary Thornhill, he had him, you, you name it, he's had every single every single person in Liverpool who I'd say who are around my age or, or, or older than me, twenty from me to 20 years older, mm. Georgie Vaughan will have coached him some, somewhere along the line. Going back to the Tundra, it's a massive successful amateur club, great club. Um, Jimmy Albo, box for George. Jimmy mm. Albo was George's coach, a coach with George. Yeah. <laughs> and just little things like that, Paul Warmsley, yeah. um, Chris Edmonds at Transport was with George Mellor, or you name it, all, all the top mm. coaches in Liverpool. Somewhere John Smith at, yeah. at Stockbridge. Yeah. All the top coaches have been with Georgie Vaughan, Paul Edwards, sorry, with Georgie Vaughan. <laughs> it's, it's mad. The Smith brothers were with Georgie yeah. Vaughan apart from Callum. Um, so he's played a massive, a, a big part in everyone's everyone's life as a as a co- as a boxing coach, mm. a boxing man. Um, so you know he deserves all the, all respect in the world, and I think without him, boxing would be a bad place. You still keep in contact with him regularly. He lives every, near you, doesn't he? Every day, every day. Yeah. I speak to him every day. Yeah. Um, he's family to me. We're family. Yeah. Every Wednesday we go for our walk and our breakfast together, right. um, and he'll always be a massive part of my life. Known for his no nonsense in the gym. 
How was he like to train under? You wouldn't be here. If he, if he was <laughs> here, you wouldn't be here doing this interview. Uh, that's how, that, 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 yeah. that, that's how, that's how it was. Yeah. No, no cameras. Your parents, or well, my parents have never yeah. been in the gym anyway. <laughs> that's just the way. I think that's because of him. Yeah. Um, but you couldn't, your mate couldn't be here. You'd be waiting outside. He'd be waiting around the corner. <laughs> and you, your friends, no girlfriends in the gym, no friends, no nothing. No personal trainers, no conditioning coaches. He was the man. Mm. He'd done your conditioning, your diet, your running. Run every morning with us at half six in the morning on a bike when he was on his bike. We were yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he'd done everything. It was no nonsense. If you didn't like it, there's the door, see you later, go. And that and again you can't you can't buy that. I mean times have moved on. Because later on in, like now, there's conditioning coaches everywhere, there's there's more um people on the nutrition side of it, there's got running coaches now and everything, but mm. with George he done it all. Um again if you didn't like it, you were gone. So you wouldn't have no cameras in the gym. No one knew no anything. Um so it was it was good. It was good to learn off, yeah, obviously, sure. and good to be good to be around. Like now, like I say to our fighters now, that's Conor Button. Have Georgie Vaughan was here now, mate. You would not like it. <laughs> way, like, there'd be no cameras out. No TikToks. No social media. Just sparring now. Give us a photo. And you're like fucking hell. What's going on here? Just spar and go. We just well, we had our sparring partners in the gym. Sparring partners come in the gym. Would spar George and say, "Could you get your coat on and go?" Yeah, yeah, okay. They travel from, from Birmingham or whatever, just to get changed and go. We've got to carry on our session and no one's watching us. And that's what was, what was great. You won't be able to replace a gentleman like that, but is the looking at the boxing spectrum at the moment, is there any Georgie Vaughans out there that you're seeing training fighters at the moment? I like Peter Fiori. Yes, uh, yes. I think he's an unbelievable coach. Uh, and I like his, his, his presence, I should say. Yeah, uh, definitely. And there's no nonsense. Yeah. And he's, I think he's an honest coach as well. I, like, I also like Adam Bude, um as, as a coach. Mm. Joe Gallagher, you can't, you cannot not say yeah, he's not a good coach. Joe, yeah. he's, you can't say he's not a good coach. Um, the success he's had, the late Oliver Allison, who I went with later on in my career, yeah, yeah. Was, was an unbelievable coach. Unbelievable coach. And I, I mean, <clears throat> if he was still around now, obviously he got to be the. I'll just say it, the. The. I would do. The rewards, I think he'd get now. If he yeah, was still yeah, here with yeah. us, he'd get the rewards because what he'd done with Martin Murray, Rocky Fields, and myself, you know, threatened to sell later on in his career. We, had, we all had great careers and he played the part. He was a great coach for us. Talking about those names there, Jamie Moore as well. Yeah, you, sorry, went, you, yeah. you, you went down to that gym and trained as well, yeah. down to Manchester. Yeah. How was that? Because that seems like such a fun, just a lad sort well, of gym, that. Just yeah, a good vibe. Well, when. Obviously, I've, I've, I've retired for a bit. I think I, I had two years out, mm. um, and then after that, I come back and I decided I want, wanted to have another go. Mm. Um, I wanted to have another go with the fighting game. Come seeing George. Me and George spoke, and his advice was go and find another coach in a, in a nice way. Mm. In a nice way, I think you've gone a bit stale where we are. Find another coach, get a little new lease of life somewhere else, and. and See how you feel. So then from there, I spoke to Sean Farmer, who's now got Waterloo ABC, he's doing a great job there. Mm. Um, Sean, much. I don't know, Tyler Oliver Allison's. Blah, blah, blah. Me and Sean just speak on social media. Yeah, social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a victim of it now. Social media. <laughs> um, and then one night I was playing, I remember playing snooker at Raleigh's in Waverty, and Oliver Allison rang me. And at the time, I was like, Oliver Allison, and me, a old trainer, trained Martin Murray, who was yeah. Martin Boxing on the amateur scene. Okay. So the next day I went to Manchester, walked in the gym, and all of us, these were all of his words, and I, I, I use these words now to, to fight to come to us. Okay. Don't commit, do a month, see how you feel. I went, do a month here, see how you feel. If you don't like it, go and try somewhere else. And he went, oh, go and try other gyms in that month, have a little taste of what gym you like, get the, get, get the feel of the place. Mm. Started skipping. Jamie Moore walks in. Jamie went training at the time he retired. Jamie walks in. Martin walks in. Craig Lyon walks in. Another lad, Tamayo, walked in. I'm skipping. 
banter started flowing. What's the scouts are doing in our gym? <laughs> and I just thought, I'm not going anywhere. I'm man, done. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. This, this is me. I loved every minute of it. Yeah, this but... stuff. Listen, we were, we had some great times. You've got to say, any stories that you could pluck out that you could say on camera? I remember Barcelona beating uh, Man United, and there was another lad, Cal. Um, Skeggs, who was a scout lad, he come, used to travel up with Dodds and he, he had, I don't, know, I don't think Carl did box pro, but he turned, I know he turned a couple of injuries, I think, mm. stopped him from moving on, but we used to have loads of bands there, Tony Dodson ended up coming there, Rocky Field and was there as well at the time, Joe Selkirk even had to go yeah. with us, um, and Barcelona beat Man United in the Champions League, and I remember going up the next, we used to, we used to train at 10 o'clock, and the gym, gym was always open, but Oliver was in his office, so yeah. he lived around the corner, so the gym door was always open. I remember getting there and putting, you had them bobs, not the dummies, but you put yeah. I put a Barcelona top on one of them, I put a Barcelona flag up, and just, just little things like that, and the lad, and then I went, I went somewhere else then, I think I went back in my car, I parked my car around the corner, and they've all come in and like, what the fuck's going on here? And I walked in, and they knew right away it was me, but little things like that where, you know, we, we used to have good times, but, once the team got put on with, with Oliver, it was it was serious stuff and technician as mm. a technical coach, for me one of the best in the world. His, his stuff he'd done. I still <laughs> me and Jeno, one of our well, our, our head coach as an amateur and mm. one of our pro coaches. We do a lot of Oliver Allison thrills. Um certain combinations used to do. What you think that won't work, but it works. And you know, I, I learn from every coach I've been with. Someone else that would mean a lot to, to this gym and, your, and yourself, the help that she's done, is, is, is Charlotte Gilly at Maverick yeah. Stars Trust. Yeah. Um, go on. I want to go back to coach-wise as well. Danny Vaughan, obviously we haven't mentioned Danny. Yes, yes, quite. He's been like my brother. Um, Georgie's son. And then I, from, I went from Oliver's. I then got offered the qualified. Um, but I wanted to win it with, with, a, with a Vaughan in my corner. And I felt that Danny would have been the... I think I got beat by Marcelli, if I'm right, mm. I remember. I got beat by Marcelli, and then... I think it was another Oliver might have told me to, to, to pack it in. Now, you know, you've had, you've had, that, you've had that hard room, we've had great times. Boxed the European title, world title, third and that. You've um, boxed the world title twice, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah well, I boxed for, the, I boxed for the interim belt. Yeah, yeah, and then the I suit. Me, I remember I won, a, I won a WBA interim. I got told within 90 days I would be rewarded the world title. 90 days later, I was still waiting for, me, <laughs> for the full belt. Yeah. I still got the belt, but you want, you want the title. Yeah. Um, obviously, I beat Steve Foster Jr. from Manchester for the mm. WBU. At the time, the WBU was like, like the WBO is now. Yeah, it's not, yeah, uh, it's it's not it's around. Got, it's gone now. Yeah. Then I boxed for the IBO world title mm. uh, against Marcelli, and then I boxed Flanagan for the WBO. Yeah, boxed, did you box Terry twice? Terry Flanagan. In, in prize fighter. Yeah, yeah okay. And, and, uh, and then going back to, which I got off of the... Um, Qualified, but I wanted I wanted George or Danny because later on, sorry, Danny was George's number two. Mm. Um, he's done all the pads work and everything, done everything for us, all the running with us as well as George, both of them together, done everything. Um, so I felt that I needed Danny or George to be with me, and Danny had moved to Scotland at the time, and I ended up moving to moving up to Scotland with Danny, staying in a little flat. Preparing the best I could be prepared for Crawler with five weeks' notice for a British title, and, yeah. and look what we've done. Yeah, we've won that, and then I think I ended up winning six titles after mm. that. We beat Crawler, me and Danny just went, whoo, just like I think Danny was still there. Obviously, you, you never stop there in the game, mm. but like I think I was, I was Danny's first proper established fighter, mm. um, first time we've been in charge of a fighter, and then from there, we just grew, we just grew and grew and grew. and I, again, the respect I've got for George and Oliver is Danny. Danny played a massive, massive part. And if he wouldn't have given me the opportunity to go with him to be Crawler, I most probably would, I most probably would have retired. Mm. So I owe him everything, if you know what I mean. And then again, I've had a, a good career with, with three. Yeah, of course. George and Danny are yeah. their coaches, but I've had, I say I've had three top coaches because they all had to go each with me. Mm. And believe it or not, Danny won the most belts. <laughs> me and Danny won the most belts together, so I'd say. <laughs> Danny, Danny's beating his dad just on that. <laughs> what do you think your, your career highlight was? Uh, sitting there and you're going through the, your, your pro career, your amateur career, what you regard as the, 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 the pinnacle of your, of your whole boxing career? 
I don't know, you know, it's it's a it's a tough one. Mm. Um, like I always get a, I get asked, I like to get asked once a week who's the best I've boxed because I'm it's, it's hard. Luke Campbell's got to be one of the best. Yeah, yeah. Te- Te- technically, yeah. Luke Campbell's got to be. Right even, up there. even punch him, punch him wise, you can mm. whack so hard, mm. so so hard. Flanagan again. Yeah. Crawler. Look at them teams, <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's pick those names up. Tony Louise as well. And then you've got, who else, Steve? Tommy Coyle. Yeah, yes, yeah, Tommy Coyle. Fuck. There's, there's loads. Um, Steve Foster Jr. Mm. I remember boxing Foster on the Kalzaghi undercard at the MN Arena. I was 21. Found one off of the fight. Everyone's, everyone's going, you're joking, aren't you? Two time NBA champion, he's going to walk right through me. I don't even think he hit me once. 12 rounds um, I absolutely played him I knew for a fact there was not a chance in this world Steve Foster Jr could beat me in on boxing ability mm. um, and I'd say that was one of the, the best career highlights for me and then Tony Louise in the Echo Arena in my own so yeah. for the WBA incident that um, that's got to be up there as well what do you reckon the worst moment of your career is? I lost three fights um, on the bounce, mm. and not many. Well, some people will. It was boxing people will know it, mm. but I had like a sort of a mental block with boxing with a ring with yellow ropes, mm-hmm. and the three three times I got beat, the ring had yellow ropes. Said time to sport. Oh yeah, Christ! Yeah. And the ring was yellow, and I was just like, but I just don't know why that was because of the first fight. And then I went with Martin Lindsay. I was beating Martin Lindsay, put him over twice, and Jimmy with a minute to go. So I always got beat with a ring with yellow ropes, prize fighter, Buckland in the final. Oh, God. I could never win, win with a ring with yellow ropes. <laughs> and so, and when I moved to Oliver Allison's, his fucking ring had yellow ropes. One of it, he had two rings, and one of them, with the Jamaican flag, and one of them had yellow ropes. So it was, it was just, it was that, losing three bouts, three fights on the bounce. Let's obviously talk about the gym a little bit more. Um, yeah, we've all gone to some of the work you've done, but I, I did mention her name earlier. Um, she's part of the King's New Year's Honours list, MBE. Yeah. Soon to be Charlotte Gilly. Um, you put a tweet out, long time coming, and, and it is, isn't it? That work she's done, for, for, especially in the North West as well, the amount of clubs that she helps out. Unbelievable. Listen, the woman, the lady, she should say, doesn't get the recognition. Well, she is getting the recognition, finally. Yes. Finally. Um, I think for her as well, it's not about that though. She's just a, she's just a great person who, who likes to help people. She's helped us massively. Listen, what what she's done for my boxing club, my amateur boxing club, <coughs> is unbelievable. Helped us go from stand to stand every every season. Still helping us to this day. Still speak on a regular basis. Mm. Become a part of my CIC with me, and I want. I've always wanted to pop, set the charity up. Um, Charlotte let me do that. She's one of our board members as well, so we you know we're, we're, we're close, and she she's well deserved for what she's getting. And long may continue, not just for our boxing club, but for every boxing club she's helped. She's helped everyone. I don't think there's not a boxing club <laughs> in, in 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 Britain who she hasn't helped or she tried to help. Um, so I'm grateful. I know all my kids at my club are yeah. grateful, and most probably all the other coaches at every other club are grateful. Yeah, and there's not a club out there that hasn't got a Maverick Stars banner or logo. You see your bus out there that's even got it as well. Yeah, so she's all over my bus. Um, she's all over the all over banners, all over the gym as well. So, how long may it continue? Yeah. Um, and, and for Charlotte, well done, and keep keep up the good work. Seeing on Tuesday as well to talk about this, which would be good. But um, yeah, back to CIC. Um, Christmas was a huge time for everyone. Huge time as well for yourself. The largest free Christmas party. It, in history for the city, wasn't it? Over yeah. 100 people turned up? Yeah, we had, we had 500 kids who attended. Um, my mate, Mitchell Walsh, who's coming in the minutes due to a um, training session. He owns Integrigas. Integrigas it is a, 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 um, a company, a building company, um, a property developer, I should say, and he, he helped fund it mm. along with ourselves and other, other people yeah, who, don- who, who, who would have donated applied nutrition played a big part as well um, Frankie Preston from Frankie Knuckles Boxing want to thank him he donated as well a, a big donation um, so everyone Dave Petard from who owns Zen and 
couple of the, the bars in town. They also donated, and everyone just had just helped. And it's not, it's about the kids who, I won't say we were poor, but just the kids of the city, mm. um, our, our own kids. You know what I mean? Five hundred kids come, about three hundred parents. Um, the Adelphi was full. They got fed, watched the play, got all, all mm. got a present each. And it was great to see, it was great to see mi- kids mixing all under one roof. Mm. And how it should be. There's no new clubs around no more in the city. Picking this back up, Derry, sorry, the, the camera seemed to fall yeah, there. No um, yeah, uh, as well as the, the Christmas party for the CIC, yeah. etc. I think you know what I'm about to speak about. You put the tweet out, got a lot of um, mixed reviews, mixed responses. You got coach of the year in some tweets, you got slated in some of the other, but... Um, you took the amateur boxing club kids to, to Hooters. Just um, talk about that one, mate. That's all. Um, how do I do this? Explain it. We've got, in, in, in our boxing club, we've got elite boxers. Yeah. Which are all, when I say elite, there's an open, we have an open class gym. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Anyone over the age of four, anyone over the age of 14, we've all had loads of bouts. They're Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Anyone under the age of 14 on Monday, Wednesday, Friday at half four, they're all, mis- they're all on skills. Mm-hmm. Tuesday, Thursday, beginners kids. Tuesday, Thursday night, and beginners adults. So, the kids who went to Uters, there's 10 or 12 of them in their group, little group of them, all had skills bouts, all had the first bout this season. So I said, right, lads. Where the big, we go? Not, well, the big lads went for a meal. And had the, old, the ones who were seniors, we took them for a pint, yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Where did you want to go? Kids went, can we go to Hooters? We all want to go with Hooters. The babies, and I went, oh my God. So, long story short, booked Hooters for them, went to Hooters. The kids got a round of applause when they went in. I, like, <laughs> I went a bit red myself, and all everyone was cheering them and all that. And then, from there, it just grew. And I didn't, I don't, I didn't see the problem. They, them kids wanted to go to Hooters. They're going to go anywhere with the parents, so I thought, as a coach, I want to take my boxers for the restaurant they want to go. Yeah. Um, we all sat there, had our meal, and the kids got spoiled, I should say. Um, food and drinks, non alcohol, before someone had <laughs> moan. Um, we had to be down there two or three hours having a laugh. Um, a couple of the lads were saying it was their own Bertie, so the, so the girls would dance for them and, and do whatever. But even if we didn't, they went there, but to go to the restaurant in town. Yeah, and yeah, Funnily enough, that rest on to two weeks ago. Somebody wanted to go there. Look, social media and YouTube world, yeah, it, 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 you can't stop kids from searching anything. So I, that you can't I think, really moan, I think. I was made up because it was my excuse to go as well. <laughs> <laughs> that was my excuse. I was like, I've got to be lads want to go. So I want to go, all right. But listen, it, it was good fun. Yeah. Um, and the older kids, our, our elite kids, they got took to Carly's. I made home to the restaurant around the corner. We went in there, had to bite to eat and a, and, a, and a few pints with them. And, mm. and it was Christmas. Only a few more, now you've got to get back onto to, to PTs. Yeah. But um, looking forward as well to January 21st. Um, someone you know really well, Liam Smith. Um, that's a huge fight and a huge card as well, I must say. Just been announced recently. What do you make of that fight just out, out the back, mate? That's a great fight. Mm. Um, it's a... It's a and it's a proper fight, eh? If you know what I mean. Mm. No matter what belt, it, if it's for, it's a it's a great fight. Um, and it'd be one I'd be glued to, or one I'm going, I should say. Um, and I've just got a feeling Beefy's just too experienced in at world level. I think he'll he'll outsmart him. I think he'll be. Listen, Beefy's unbelievable, great fighter, mm. and to this day, as most probably give Canelo his best fight. I'd say. I think a lot of what people are saying is that you know Chris Eubank starts fast early and seems to wither away in the later rounds. This is the opposite, I'd say, for Liam. Liam gets stronger as the rounds go on. Do you say that's how you see the fight happening? It might change, though, might it? Eubank might do anything. It's, mm. just, it's just who's going to have the right tactics. Um, but I just think Beefy's too too clever. And he's, what do you call it, an ally in boxing. He's, he's, mm. he's so clever. It's unbelievable. It's just mm. like, what, you don't know what he's going to, like, you don't know what to what, what predict next. He's like, he's got everything. For me, he's got everything. He's, 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 a, he's a world-class fighter, a proven world-class fighter. And I, and I still stay to this day. We were talking about it this morning. Mm. I said, who, who else has gave Canelo an hard to fight? No. Yeah, beefy. Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. Dun, beef, dun beefy. He, 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 come on. And the lads own. It's hard to think. Obviously, Mayweather beat him, but who else? No one in Britain has. 
Let's give, let's give him another fight and I just think it'll be the same with, with Eubank. I think he'll just be too clever, too cute for him. And I think he could stop Eubank. I spoke to Beefy just before Christmas um, and he said he'd feel that he, he'd find it hard to lose to Eubank. But again, he said he'd find, he found it hard to, to, if he lost yeah, to, to Fowler, etc. So where do you see either fighter going after this? Got to be match close. <laughs> if if you yeah, bet yeah. wins, unfortunately for for Liam, yeah, yeah, um, and there's going to be a, there's a lot of money involved in this. So, so you're saying you probably consider trilogy. Yeah, so is there be match close if you bet wins or yeah, if if, if, if you bet wins, not if, if Liam wins. But if Liam wins, I'd give you back to be match because there's more probably more money in it. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's pay per view. So whoever wins, yeah. I think he will be a rematch. It depends how you win. Yeah, of course, yeah. Depends how do you win. I think if if Liam beats Eubank, then again, he can fight for the world title. But you'd most probably get more money boxing Eubank, so and it depends what what vision Liam's got, whether he wants to win a world title or shitloads of money to retire. So it's up to him. And finally, just a word as well. Um, Natasha Jonas has had a, a best year of date, let's say. Just yeah. a word on her and her, her success as, as a fellow Livy Pundian. She's done brilliant. Mm. Uh, she got fighter of the year as well. She's fighter, fighter of the year. Yeah. Did she? Yeah. Yeah. Female fighter or all fighter? With um, st- not from everyone. Everyone seemed to pick Bivol was their, their, as their main fighter, but uh, certain publications pick, pick, picked. Um, is, she got Brit- is she a British fighter of the year? I thought she did she not win. I'm Thank sure you. she won British fighter of the year. Um, mm. If not, I think she deserves it. She's been brilliant, outstanding, and she's doing great for the city. She brought Liverpool boxing for the city right up there. Um, for some reason, all the, all the gyms have got loads of loads of females in, and they've got Tasha to thank for that. We haven't got any <laughs> females, um, but all the, all the gyms across the city have got Tasha, Tasha Jonas to thank, and long may continue. I hope she has another great year. That's another great year. Keep defending them belts. I'm doing doing the self, our family, and the city proud. Derry, I've taken far too much of your time, mate. Thank you no so worries. much for, for allowing me to the gym and, and talking to me, but thanks for the boxing social, mate. No worries, anytime, mate. Top